It was a night unlike any other night. All was calm. The angels could not believe their king of heaven was gone. For a seat was now empty at the right hand of God. A king should have a fanfare with trumpets and a song. Not a lowly manger. That's not where he belongs. God summoned his angels and said, come, now is the time. My son will soon be born there. There is the sign. A star shined brightly in the cold December sky. That's when a sudden sound was heard. The Messiah's first cry. His mother Mary washed him. She cleaned his hands and feet. There were no pillows or even a place for him to sleep. So Mary held him in her arms and cherished this gift from above. That's when her eyes met his and what she saw was love. Tonight, I want to take a few moments, and I want to ask you to look into the eyes of Jesus. Picture yourself holding him as a baby, this this newborn baby in your arms, and you're looking at him for the very first time. Imagine his soft skin, his wrinkly little fingers, his scrunchy little face, his silky newborn hair, and as you look at him, Your eyes finally meet his. And in that instant, you are overwhelmed with love. One of the best gifts that you can open this Christmas is God's gift of love. And I want to spend just a few moments together as a family unwrapping this incredible gift. So as we open up God's gift of love, we first notice God's love for us. 1 John 4, 9 through 10. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Friends, if you ever find yourself doubting God's love for you, simply read this verse over and over and over. This, in my opinion, is one of the greatest statements of God's love that you will ever read in the Bible. You see, look, here's what happened. God, God put it all on the line. He loved you so much that he sent his one and only son to earth so that you might have the hope of eternal life, the hope of, of forgiveness of sins, and the hope of a relationship with him. You see, Jesus, he left his eternal throne, his his seat at the right hand of the Father, so you and I could fully experience his love for us. Friends, he loves us more than we can even understand, more more than we can even fathom. I mean, our brains are simply too small to comprehend how wide, how long, how high, and how deep the Father's love is for us. You see, Jesus, he didn't stay a baby in a manger. He grew up. He got bigger. Eventually, he left home. And then he started to tell people who he was. He healed people. He even brought people back to life. And he did that because he loves us. And eventually, he demonstrated his love for us by spreading his hands out on the cross and saying, this is how much I love you. This is how much you matter to me. I made you. I created you. I was born for you. And I will die for you. That's how much I love you. Have you ever seen the the bumper sticker? around the Christmas season that says Jesus is the reason for the season. Have you seen this? Like signs and bumper stickers. I mean, that that phrase is right. Jesus is the reason for the season. All of this other stuff, it's fun. It's festive. The jingle bells, the tinsel, the trees, the presents, all good stuff. But yeah, Jesus is the reason for the season. However, there's actually something much deeper than that phrase. You are the reason for the season. 
From God's perspective, you are the reason for the season. As, as God looked down on his world, he noticed that, that men and women and children were actually falling away from him. And he knew that we needed a savior. He knew that the sin in our life was, was driving a wall between us and him. So we sent his son. He came for you. Friends, you are the reason for the season. The reason we have Christmas is because God loves us. He cares about us. So he sent his son as the best gift ever to bring you hope, peace, joy, and love. Christmas is all about God's love, his love for us. As we, as we open this gift of love from God, we actually notice, though, that there's another piece to this gift. Our love for God. 1 John 2, 5 through 6. We truly love God only when we obey him as we should. And then we know that we belong to him. If we say we are his, we must follow the example of Christ. You see, because God gave to us this beautiful gift of his love, it actually drives us, it actually compels us to love him back. And you see, when, when we truly love him, then a desire will rise up inside of us because we want to become more like him. As children of God, the person that we are to mimic, the, the person that we are to imitate is Jesus Christ, the true Son of God. Look, our, our life should mimic and reflect the life of Christ. Christ was kind. We should be kind. Christ showed grace to others, and so should we. Christ was holy. We should be pure. Christ lived a life of love, and we should do the same. You see, as, as followers of Christ, we should have an unbreakable love for God where we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our strength. You see, if, if we are to follow the example of Christ, then we must live life where we express our love to God. We must worship Him, sing His praises, obey His commandments, and spend time growing in his word. You see, to fully love God means to imitate Christ in all areas of your life. Now look, in our world today, it's very easy to want to imitate someone else. Maybe, maybe we want to look and act like our favorite celebrity, or our favorite musician, or our favorite actor, or, or our favorite football player. However, what we will soon realize is that these men and women are human, just like us. They are broken, they are bruised, and in a moment's notice, they might lead us astray. But instead, if, if we truly love God, then we will seek to imitate Christ first, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Christmas. It's all about God's love for us and our love for God. But there's one more thing. Christmas is also about our love for others. 1 John 3.18. Let us stop just saying we love people. Let us really love them and show it by our actions. Look, when, when the Bible talks about loving others... It's, it's not necessarily always talking about like a, like a romantic, feel-good, emotional love. It's actually talking most of the times about a love that is based on choice. It's talking about how we choose to care for others, how we choose to love those who are kind and respectful to us, as well as to love those that annoy us and maybe are a little rude. You see, we are called to love others in this way because it's the same way that God showers us with his love. You see, God continues to love us even when we are unlovable, angry, or hurtful towards him. 
He continues to love us no matter the circumstances. And you see, God calls us to love others in the exact same way. We are to love others the same way that Christ loves us. Oh, he got it. Okay. <laughs> so how do we do that? How do we do that? How do we love others? Make giving, not getting, the goal of your love. And look, I, I'm not talking about just giving someone a present. Look, giving a gift at Christmas, it's an awesome thing. I love giving gifts to other people. However, if Christmas is the only time I give my love to others, then I am falling way short of how God wants me to express his love. So my prayer for you this Christmas is that you will begin to show others how much you truly love them. And you can do that not by giving more gifts, but by giving more of yourself. When we make giving the goal of our love, then those we love the most will know it by the things we say and the things we do. Your gift of love for others should not be something you give once a year wrapped in a box with paper and a bow. Your real gift this Christmas should be the kind words you speak to your spouse, the encouragement you bring to your children or your grandchildren, the patience you display when things aren't going your way. Friends, I pray that each person here tonight gives a wonderful gift to someone they love this Christmas. But more than those one or two gifts, I pray that your love for others would be more like, more like Cousin Eddie's famous line in Christmas Vacation. Well, Clark, it's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. Hey, if you haven't seen that movie, you're missing out big time. So friends, you... You are the reason for the season. You are the reason that Jesus came to this world. You are the reason he decided to show you what real love actually is. So this Christmas, as you, as you receive gifts from those that love you, I pray that you will actually receive the best gift ever from a father that loves you like crazy. Jesus Christ a baby born in a manger, God's perfect gift of love from him to you. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, how we love you, Lord. You are such a good, good Father. Lord, thank you for your ultimate gift, the best gift ever, your gift of love that was wrapped in blankets and born in a manger. God, we thank you for that love. And we thank you for how you have showed your love to us and how it compels us and drives us to want to love you more and more and more. And finally, God, I just pray that you would begin cultivating a desire deep within us to love others. God, I pray that we would become people that would be on fire for showing others how much we love them, not just those that are kind to us, also those who may not even know your love yet, that we would be just as kind to them and show them your love through our actions. God, I pray that each person here has an absolutely incredible Christmas that is centered on Jesus Christ and your love for us. It's in your name we pray, amen.